Hi, nature explorers. I hope you've had a good time getting through all of your <clears throat> activities and such during your camp week. Um, be ready for your final story of the, of the session. Since most of this camp has been about your backyard, um, we hope that you've realized with all of our activities and the things that you've been studying and doing that your backyard can be all kinds of things. You know, you've got your regular backyard, which may or may not be big, or it could be very big. Then you could have, like, your neighborhood could sort of be your backyard, or your backyard could grow to include your, your community or your county. And I guess, finally, what we, what we want you to kind of come away with um, from, our, from our camp this year is that the whole earth can be your backyard, because we live on the earth. And so the earth is our, is our big backyard, as we've been calling it. So I thought maybe you'd like to hear a story about um, uh, what one group of people tell as where the earth came from or how the earth came to be. And so this story, um, it has been told for many, many generations by the Onondaga people. Now, Onondaga means people of the hills. And they are, the Onondaga, are one of the six nations of the Haudenosaunee people. And they used to be called the Iroquois, but they refer to themselves as the Haudenosaunee. Um, and their traditional lands are the eastern woodlands of the United States, um, kind of up no uh, New York and northern parts of Pennsylvania is where they were located and still are located. Um, so. The story that they tell about the beginning of the earth is called The Earth on the Turtle's Back. So I hope you like it. So a very long time ago, before this earth existed, there was only water. And the water stretched as far as you could see in all directions. And some animals and birds swam around in the water. And far above the clouds was the skyland. And in the skyland was a great tree. And this great tree had four big white roots that stretched out in all four of the sacred directions. So one of the roots grew off to the north, another one of the roots grew off to the east, another one grew to the south, and the fourth root grew to the west. And in the branches were all of the fruits and the flowers and plants. Now, in the Skyland, there was also an ancient chief, and his wife was expecting a child, expecting a baby. And one night, she had a dream, and in her dream, she saw the great tree had been uprooted. And so the next morning, she told her husband about her dream, and he nodded as she was finishing her story, and he said, oh, my wife. I am sorry to hear that you've had this dream. Clearly it is a dream that is very powerful. And as is our way, when one has such a powerful dream, we must do everything in our power to make sure that it comes true. And so our great tree must be uprooted. And so he called the young men of the Skyland and told them that they had to uproot the great tree. And so they all went and they all gathered around the great tree. But those roots were so strong and so deep that no matter how hard they tried, they could not budge that tree. So finally, the ancient chief himself came to the tree and he struck the tree with his stone ax. And then he wrapped his arms around the trunk and he bent his knees and he strained and he pulled and he tried and with one final great effort he pulled the tree up by its roots and he laid it on its side and where those roots had gone deep into the skyland there was now a huge hole well the chief's wife wanted to see what was in the hole so she came over to look down and she grabbed onto one of the branches of the tree as it laid on the on its side and she peeked over the edge to see what she could see. 
and she thought that she saw something glittering way far below, glittering like water. And so she leaned a little bit further to get a better look, and she lost her balance, and she fell into the hole. And the tree branch stripped through her fist and left her with nothing but a handful of seeds as she started falling down and down and down. Now far below, the animals and the birds, some of them had been looking up. And one said, look, someone is falling down through the sky from the skyland. And another one said, We're, we must help. And so two swans took off and they flew up to meet the sky woman. And they caught her in their big, wide, white wings. And they, they caught her and slowed her down so that she didn't fall so quickly. But as the animals below were watching, one of the animals looked and said, she doesn't look like us. She doesn't have webbed feet. I don't think she's going to be able to live in the water. And another of the animals said, whatever are we going to do to help? And one of the water birds said, I know, I've heard that down, down below, deep below the waters, there is earth. And if someone could get down there and bring earth to the surface, she would have a place to stand. And so the animals and the birds all decided that that's what their plan was going to be. That someone was going to have to dive down and bring the earth up. Well, some say that Duck was first. And so Duck headed down and dove and didn't get terribly far before he ran out of breath and he had to come back to the surface. He failed. He did not, he did not reach the earth. So Beaver tried next. And Beaver went far, far down. He got down to where it was dark even. The, the sunlight couldn't even get that far. But he ran out of air and he came to the surface. He had failed too. He didn't bring back the earth. So next came Loon. Loon is a very strong swimmer and a really strong diver and so he tried. And he dove and dove and dove and he was gone for a long, long time. But when he came to the surface, he didn't have any earth either. He had failed. And so one by one, all of the strongest swimmers had tried and failed, couldn't get to the bottom of the waters to bring back the earth. So they, they weren't sure what they were going to do. Finally, they heard a little voice that said, I will go, I will bring back the earth, or I will die trying. They looked around. Who? Who is speaking? Who could be saying that? And they looked and it was Muskrat. Now she, she is not very big. She's tiny, way tinier than the rest of the animals we tried. And she's not as strong and not as swift of a swimmer, but she was very determined. And so she dove and down she went. She swam and she swam and she swam until it got dark, but she swam further. And she swam and she swam and she swam until she thought her lungs were going to burst. But then she swam further. And she swam and swam until she was just about ready to pass out. And she finally reached out with her tiny paw and just took a swipe at what she thought was the earth before she passed out and floated to the surface. And when the animals saw her break the surface of the water and come up, she looked lifeless and they thought, Oh, not only has she failed, but just as she said, she looks like she died trying. But one of the animals said, look, her little right paw, it's clenched tight. She has the earth. And they went to her and then they thought, what are we going to do with it? They didn't know where they were going to put it. But then there was a deep voice that said, put it on my back. And they turned around and it was a great turtle turtle had come up from the depths of the water and they took muskrat over and placed her paw on turtle's back and that earth touched his back and immediately began to grow and it grew and it grew and it grew till it was the size of the world today. Well just as that happened the swans brought the sky woman down and set her down and she stepped onto the new earth. And she opened her hand and all those seeds from the great tree fell onto the bare soil 
and began to sprout into all of the trees and the shrubs and the flowers and the fruits that we have today. And the life on dry earth had begun. And if you see a turtle to this day, they have on their backs the markings of Muskrat's paw to remind us of how brave she was and what a great thing she had done by creating or by bringing back the earth so that we would have dry land to be on. So I hope you enjoyed this story and I hope you enjoyed camp and we'd love to hear from you about all the neat things that you that you experienced in the last few weeks with your kit and we'll see you again hopefully in person next year for camp. We'll see you. Bye.